I was trying to figure out something to talk about this week because it's been one of those weird reading weeks and I came across someone doing this fantastic A to Z book tag and thought, what better way to let people get to know me even better? everyone, it's Ray. Welcome to my little bookish corner of the world, which is constantly growing. And today I am going to be doing the Perpetual Page Turners A to Z survey, which has morphed into the A to Z book tag. It was originally <laughs> released back in 2020 when everything was closed down. So plenty of people were returning to the wonders that was the, the book. And I thought, how better to give people a little bit more insight into me as a reader? So let's get going. A, author you've read the most books from, Jill Mansell. Without a shadow of a doubt, I have read every single book in her back catalogue. I have got her newest books in arc form and hardback form because I love them and they are a little bit of brightness and teariness at the same time. I love books that make me cry and laugh um, as you'll probably discover as we get further on in the quiz. B. Best sequel ever. This is a tough one. Uh, I've read quite a few sequels that I've really enjoyed and most recently I read the fantastic Ghostsmith by Nikki Papretto, which is the sequel to Bonesmith. And I talked all about it in my August wrap up video. So I will post a link to that in the, in the info box below if you want to find out more. I think it is hugely underrated and really enjoyable, very well written kind of Norse mythology mix with fantasy. I, I loved it. Currently reading. I am currently reading Holmes and Moriarty by Gareth Rubin, who also wrote The, to the Turn Glass last year. Uh, this has been authorised by um, Arthur Conan Doyle's foundation, his, his organisation, and it is an, so it's an authorised, authenticated sequel to the Sherlock Holmes novels. Um, I'm only a few pages in. In fact, I'm about 20 pages in right at this moment. So I can't really comment on whether I'm enjoying it or not. It's quite fast moving. And I like the dynamic, the idea of the dynamic of um, Holmes and Moriarty working together, which I think this is where it's going to lead. D, drink of choice while reading. T, I am a Brit, if you couldn't tell. And I think that's the cliche that a Brit enjoys a good cup of tea with, people say cream and sugar, it's like, no, milk and sugar. Cream, for some reason, turns it this kind of weird orangey colour, and I, I can't be doing with that. I love it with a nice <laughs> glug of milk and a bit of sugar, and that is my ideal reading drink. I will occasionally have a glass of wine if it's a Friday afternoon and I've finished work, and it's, actually, if it's nice weather, I prefer a nice crisp chilled rosé but normally it's a cup of tea in fact I've got one on the go over there which I will finish after I've recorded e e-reader or physical book do I really need to answer that one I think it's kind of obvious my e-reader collection has dwindled over the last few years I will occasionally get books on NetGalley because I do like reading something in advance but for the most part I prefer a nice chunky physical book mostly because I get really bad eye strain. F, fictional character you would probably have dated in high school. I went to a comprehensive, not a high school. We didn't have high schools then. Um, we had the, the concept of a high school has always existed, but back in the 80s, they were called secondary schools or comprehensives. And I would have probably dated someone like Mr. Bingley from Pride and Prejudice. If only because we are rather unassuming, like to be sitting in the background, have a rather exuberant, outgoing friend. That is, I was always the one sitting behind when I was at school. 
gee, glad you gave this book a chance. That's a tough one. That really is a tough one. I'm looking to try and see. I'd say it was the Aurora Cycle by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I was trying to see which way I needed to move so you could see the books, which are there somewhere. <laughs> it's very, very difficult when you're looking in the camera to see which way you're supposed to go. But I'd say that the Aurora Cycle by Kaufman and uh, Kaufman and Kristoff was a really difficult one. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it because I'm not a huge science fiction reader but I really enjoyed it. I liked it so much that I purchased the Illumine files immediately afterwards and I read both series in probably two days, which is a lot of reading. I was on holiday at the time, obviously I wasn't working, but yeah, those that particular book introduced me to Illumine files, then it introduced me to Nevernight series and the Empire of the Vampire and Empire of the Damned. So yeah, I'd say those. H, Hidden Gem Book. It is 100% that, The Changeover by Margaret May. I think it's hugely underrated. It is overlooked because it is a book from the 1980s and people look at it and go, oh, that's a really tiny book. It is really tiny, but it is massively mighty. I'd say that if you enjoy fantasy and you like the idea of reading something that started this, I, I think it started the YA fantasy trend. I know that there are other books like Susan Cooper's um, Oversea Under Stone and everything else. They were all around at that time. But this one was, this is a romance. It's actually subtitled A Supernatural Romance. It includes stories of witchcraft and demon possession, but it's not as dark as many of the YA novels are today. I, important moment in your reading life. I'd say there are two, but I'm going to go with the one that happened second. When I was around nine years old, my mum gave me permission to get books from the adult section of the local public library. You had to have written permission. You couldn't just go in and say, well, I'm this age now, I'm entitled to this ticket. If you were at primary school, which I was, you had to get written permission from your parents or your parent or guardian in order to get access to the adult section of the library. And my mum wrote this permission and it opened an entire new world to me. Not that I hadn't already been reading this type of book before, the adult section book, not that sounds really bad, the books in the adult section of the library. So Stephen King, Penny Vincenzi, Danielle Steele, Barbara Taylor Bradford. These were all books that I picked up off the shelf and brought home with me and read avidly. But yeah, I'd say that um, <laughs> that was probably my best moment, the best memory I have of a moment that changed my life. And it really did because it opened up everything that wasn't in the Roald Dahl and in a Blyton section of our library, which was fantastic. Jay, just finished. I have just finished Cage of God by Elizabeth May. Uh, it was it was okay. I'm not going to read the sequel um, because I think that it ended where it needed to. And it was one of my one star reviews picks my reads for September books. K, kinds of books you won't read. Not a huge fan of thrillers, but I think people know that by now. I love a good cozy mystery and I think Agatha Christie does those very well, but she also has an element of darkness to her characters and to the situations. In fact, one of the books I've just read was Another Child Death. Um, but I am not a huge fan of thrillers that are all the, the gore and the nasty, the real nasty side of human nature. That's just not for me. L, longest book I've read. Stephen King's It. And I can say that definitively. That is the longest book I've read. Major book hangover because of... Yeah, because of Clytemnestra. Had the biggest book hangover after that one. I don't think I read anything for a week because that book turned my emotional levels inside out. It was exquisite. That's all I can say. It's exquisite. 
number of bookcases you own. You can see three of them behind me. There are another four in this room, uh, though three actual shelves rather than cases are currently empty. Um, then in my bedroom, I have two full bookcases that are the same size as the one that's right behind me. And in the lounge, I have another two bookcases, one of which is full of books and the other is full of my DVD collection, which includes a lot of really random films. Oh, one book you have read multiple times. A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. It is a constant revisit. I first read it when I was 13, 14 years old and have reread it every year since. So 37 years of rereading. That's a lot of rereads. P. Preferred place to read. Depends on the season. During the summer, at the late spring, summer and early autumn, I will I love to sit out on my balcony looking out over my plants, which are slowly currently dying because it's the season, and the sun sort of streaking over because I fate my balcony faces east. And I love sitting out there of an evening and in the morning before I start work. However, during the winter, late autumn, winter and early spring, I prefer to sit in my living room, slouched on my sofa, wrapped in a blanket with my cat on my lap, and I will read my books there. Q, quote that inspires you. I don't, don't, don't think it so much inspires me as it just gives me the feels. And it is from one of my favourites, Madeline Miller's Circe. In fact, it's the opening paragraphs of that book. When I was born, the name for what I was did not exist. They called me nymph, assuming I would be like my mother and aunts and thousand cousins. Least of the lesser goddesses, our powers were so modest, they could scarcely ensure our eternities. We spoke to fish and nurtured flowers, coaxed drops from the clouds of, or salt from the waves. That word, nymph, paced out the length and breadth of our futures. In our language, it, is, it means not just goddess, but bride. There's something about this book and the way that she evokes these emo intense emotions in the reader for the main character, Circe. It's just so powerful and I can't stop thinking about it. In fact, it's another of my book hangovers from a few years ago. Reading Regret. That I'm not going to get to read every single book ever published because there just isn't time and books are constantly being released. Series you started and need to finish where all books are out in a series. I think The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman is one. I've read the first couple of books and I've got the rest of them. I just haven't read them, mostly because they're on my Kindle rather than physical. So I think if I got them as physical books, which I might look into at a later date when I haven't got such a massive TBR, then that's probably the series that I will complete. Three of your all-time favourite books. Pride and Prejudice has to be up there as one of my all-time favourites. It wasn't. When I first read it, when I was doing my A-levels at 18, I hated it so much that I said, I actually wrote in my exam paper, this book sucks. But when I read it later on, when it wasn't an enforced text, I loved it and I couldn't get enough of it. And there's just and there's just something about the characters that she created I really enjoy. And I would I do kind of wish that she'd written a sequel, but I don't at the same time because it ended at a perfect point. Uh, another favourite book. The fact that I've got to pick three is really tough. I'd say A Room With A View has to be up there because it is so incredible and then oh gosh only three so yeah I think it has to be Circe by Madeline Miller even though Clytemnestra is kind of battling at its door it's it has to be Circe by Madeline Miller unapologetic fangirl for no one I love a lot of authors but I don't think I'm going to go all um and bedeck myself in t-shirts and everything else. I do a lot, I really enjoy a lot of authors' work and 
yeah, I, I don't think I'm a fangirl for anybody. I'm just equal opportunity. V, very excited for this release more than all the others. Both of the books I really wanted to come out, one of them is Babylonia up there, and the other one is Somewhere Beyond the Sea, the sequel to The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Kloon. Both of them have already come out, and they were my biggest, most anticipated reads for this year. Of course, I've read Babylonia twice <laughs> since it was released. It was even our book club read, and somewhere beyond the sea is sitting on my shelf waiting for me to have the time to read it. Hopefully that will be before this, the end of this month. W, worst bookish habit. I have an awful tendency when I don't have a bookmark and I'm just leaving a book for a moment to go and make a cup of tea or answer the door or go to the bathroom to especially, well, only paperbacks, um, place them page face down on the table to mark my page rather than um, doing, rather than putting a bookmark in there. And I've got plenty of old bus tickets. I do have loads of beautiful bookmarks, but I use an old bus ticket or whatever is in my purse. I've actually been known to use my phone. So, but my worst bookish habit is placing books page down when I'm trying, when I'm holding the page until I get back. X, X marks the spot. Uh, start at the top left of your bookcase and pick the 27th book. The 27th book on this bookcase is Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death, which is the first book in the Agatha Raisin series by M.C. Beaton. And it was released in 1992. And I have done an in-depth review of that book, which I will link in the info box below. Why? Your latest book purchase. I know exactly what that is. My latest book purchase. It's actually a really pretty one. It is All the Devils by Caitlin Wilson, which is a Waterstone special edition, completely black. It's beautiful black edging, very, very sleek. Feels kind of velvety, the cover. Uh, but this was my latest purchase. If you asked if I answered this question on Saturday, it would be um, a rather obscure Agatha Christie. Z, ZZ Snatcher book, last book that kept you up way late. I honestly don't know. I think I ended up with Wrist Ache. I think it was Empire of the Vampire. I was reading it. I was trying to get through it. I actually read it in one day because I finished it after midnight well, one 24 hour cycle, should I say. And I think that was the last book that I actually stayed up late for because I remember thinking, I wish that there was some kind of risk support I could have because it is such a heavy book. But that was it. So if you've got any questions about anything I've talked about, if you've actually, if you share any of my favorite books or my book dislikes or anything else, please do let me know. And of course, don't forget to um, subscribe if you aren't already. Please join me. And that was a really, really bad facial expression. And of course, um, come back again because I absolutely love talking everything bookish. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>